What if you're treating hypertension that you don't have and never had? That wouldn't be ideal, of course, but what if you find yourself taking pressure pills when you could do without them? In this video, I'll explain why fluctuations in blood pressure, even too high levels, are normal, and how to lower blood pressure without medication if you actually have hypertension. But is there such a thing as non genuine hypertension? There is a condition called pseudo hypertension which manifests when a person constantly and intensely worries about their health. When there are no objective reasons for hypertension, fear for one's life can lead to elevated blood pressure. I'll explain why this happens in detail later so that you understand the physics of the process and can distinguish true hypertension from false. So, pseudo-hypertensive individuals can even deceive an experienced doctor, and although their blood pressure readings are high, they actually need to alleviate nervous tension rather than lower their pressure. But regardless of the reasons for elevated blood pressure over an extended period, it's bad. Unfortunately, high blood pressure is one of the leading causes of mortality worldwide. It accounts for two-thirds of strokes and 50% of heart attacks. Hypertension steals 12 years of full life, and high blood pressure occurs in people of different ages and genders, even in children. But how can you suspect high blood pressure from symptoms? You can't. Without measuring blood pressure, it's impossible to determine whether there's hypertension or not. But wait, what about headaches, for example? Doctors say that headaches can't be considered a symptom of high blood pressure because most people don't have headaches, yet they have hypertension. How did that happen? And can you tell from other signs that you're already hypertensive or at risk? That's what we'll talk about today. Plus, you'll learn ways to lower blood pressure that you never even suspected because even a simple wrist expander helps reduce pressure. Surprising, isn't it? But imagine that. Today, I'll tell you in detail not only about that, but also lay out everything you wanted to know or clarify about high blood pressure and how to lower it. Let's find out. Is hypertension really related to weather sensitivity? And is it true that when a person disrupts their routine and natural biorhythms, for example, by going to bed at different times, they risk getting a diagnosis of hypertension? Today, you'll discover how to lower blood pressure without pills and doctors. Can high blood pressure occur without symptoms and without cause? How high can a person's blood pressure spike? What's the connection between fat and hypertension? Why is pseudo-hypertension worse than the real thing? Does weather sensitivity exist in hypertensive individuals? Let's clarify right away that hypertension is an official diagnosis, whereas elevated blood pressure is a condition that can occur in both sick and healthy individuals. To understand why and how blood pressure rises and what level of increase is considered hypertension, let's delve into the human body. So, the heart, circulatory system, vital organs, we've all seen these in biology class, and know that the heart is a pump that pushes blood. Arterial pressure is the force with which blood pushes against the walls of blood vessels and arteries. This process happens every second because without sufficient pressure, blood can't efficiently move and deliver oxygen and nutrients to tissues and organs. But if the pressure is too high, the vessels can burst under its force, like a rubber hose under high pressure. Now let's understand why blood pressure rises in the first place. The thing is, hypertension is a multifactorial disease, and it's impossible to pinpoint just one risk factor. It's usually a combination of factors. The most significant ones include age, excess body weight, genetic predisposition. Blood pressure elevation occurs roughly twice as often in those whose parents had a similar condition, as well as excessive salt intake, alcohol abuse, and a sedentary lifestyle. Yes, there are many causes it's a mistake to think that if the heart is responsible for pumping blood, then it's to blame for high blood pressure. The heart itself doesn't raise arterial pressure. However, sometimes arteries narrow and blood can't flow freely through them. Then the heart starts working harder and pressure increases. This happens with atherosclerosis, a condition where fatty deposits form on the artery walls. Another cause of high blood pressure is kidney dysfunction. Many don't know this, but kidneys help control pressure. They remove excess fluid and salts, thereby regulating blood volume. Blood is mostly water. When kidneys remove water, blood volume decreases and pressure in the vessels decreases too. 
about salt, we'll talk separately today. It's unfairly accused of serious harm to health. Yet, disrupted biorhythms and lack of sleep have a much greater impact on health. For instance, if someone sleeps tonight and works a night shift tomorrow or watches YouTube videos until morning, they risk getting a diagnosis of hypertension. Let me explain why. When you disrupt the natural sleep-wake cycle, or sleep too little, the body experiences stress. Lack of sleep is like lack of air. When there's nothing to breathe, it becomes scary, and the body releases the stress hormone cortisol. Of course, not getting enough sleep isn't as terrifying unless you're having nightmares. But cortisol is still produced. Let's take a moment to delve a bit deeper into cortisol. It's known as the stress hormone because it appears in response to any danger. In stressful situations, cortisol increases glucose levels, which is the main source of energy for cells, providing the body with extra fuel to deal with the danger. In the morning, cortisol helps you wake up and get ready for activity, but if you slept poorly, cortisol is produced in large quantities to give you energy after a sleepless night. Due to the stress hormone, blood pressure fluctuates several times a day in a healthy individual. And that's normal. Blood pressure rising, even to high levels, is an adequate response to physical activity or intense emotions. Once you calm down, the pressure quickly drops back to normal. Such blood pressure spikes are the body's reaction to stress. Let's remember about pseudo-hypertensive individuals. They live in constant fear for their health and life in constant stress, hence the rise in blood pressure. In a healthy individual, the stress hormone energizes the nervous system like a cold shower. The brain signals the heart to beat stronger. Naturally, blood pressure increases. This helps boost blood flow and provide organs and muscles with the necessary nutrients and oxygen to cope with stress. This body reaction can be likened to an automatic thermostat in heaters because the thermostat also automatically turns on when the room temperature is too low. Similarly, the body automatically ramps up heart activity when experiencing stress or physical exertion. And I'll repeat, this is a normal increase. It's not considered hypertension because the pressure rises momentarily during stress, exertion, or emotional upheaval and quickly returns to normal. So, what is considered hypertension? The diagnosis of arterial hypertension is established after blood pressure measurements on two different visits to the doctor within a month, with a pressure equal to or above 140-90 mmHg, or based on home blood pressure monitoring data. In other words, the diagnosis of hypertension is made when high blood pressure, regardless of its cause, persists for a long time. It's constant, you see. And there are two types of hypertension, primary and secondary. Primary hypertension is an independent condition that arises without obvious reasons. You could say that hypertension appears on its own, and this accounts for about 95% of all cases of the disease. The increase in blood pressure in primary hypertension occurs gradually and can continue for years without symptoms. Secondary hypertension occurs when there are issues in the body, such as kidney disease, thyroid gland problems, or pancreatic issues. But today, we're interested in primary hypertension, or as doctors say, its risk factors. Are you ready to learn about them? Here they are. Unhealthy diet. Lack of exercise. Excessive salt intake. Excessive alcohol consumption. Smoking. Overweight. Heredity. Stress. Nothing particularly new, is it? These same risk factors are mentioned by doctors for various diagnoses. Hypertension is also associated with them and can occur with different combinations of these causes or with just one of them. That's why some people lead a healthy lifestyle but still encounter hypertension if they have a genetic predisposition, while others may not have a genetic predisposition to hypertension but increase their risk of high blood pressure due to their lifestyle. Now, I want to talk to you about the weather. Let's find out. What do experts say about the influence of weather on blood pressure elevation? And does weather sensitivity really fall into the risk factors? Expert opinions are divided. Some believe that for weather-sensitive individuals, changes in weather, such as a drop in atmospheric pressure during a storm, indeed worsen their well-being. Here's the thing. When atmospheric pressure drops, for instance, during a thunderstorm, it leads to vasodilation. 
Such vasodilation is part of the body's complex reaction to environmental changes. However, when atmospheric pressure rises, the body reacts to the new environmental conditions. Blood vessels constrict and blood circulation worsens. What happens next, you already know. The heart pumps blood more vigorously and blood pressure rises. But other experts claim that weather sensitivity doesn't exist because it's difficult to conduct studies and there's no reliable data. Who to believe? On one hand, it's comforting to blame health problems not on one's lifestyle but on solar flares, geomagnetic storms, and so on. On the other hand, you understand that not all people with hypertension feel worse when the weather changes. So it's not about the weather. Then what is it about? Perhaps it's about noise? Yes, imagine that. Noise causes daytime stress and disrupts sleep at night. But more importantly, some studies show that prolonged exposure to noise induces stress, leading to vasodilation. And there you have it, blood pressure. Aviation noise is the most hazardous, but even household noise, such as from air conditioners, washing machines, dishwashers, especially at night, can elevate blood pressure. If you live within 50 meters of a major road, the risk of developing hypertension increases by 13%. But what if there's no noise, yet hypertension is present? Then what's the reason? Many will say it's age, and they'll be partially correct. You often hear from doctors, relatives, or acquaintances the phrase, for your age, it's normal. But is it really true that everyone universally has issues with high blood pressure as they age? No, that's not the case. Although normal blood pressure does indeed depend on a person's age. What does normal mean? It's the pressure at rest. It reflects the normal functioning of the heart and blood vessels. In children and adolescents, normal blood pressure is about 100 over 60. In adults, it's considered normal up to 140 over 90. By the way, the highest blood pressure ever recorded in the U.S. was in 1977 in a 42-year-old man. Guess what it was? 370 over 360. What do you think? But that's an extremely rare case. Blood pressure doesn't usually reach such levels. After the age of 60, blood pressure tends to rise. Why? Well, because as people age, the heart has to work harder to pump blood through vessels whose walls lose elasticity. Moreover, with age, the amount of connective tissue in the heart increases, affecting its function and raising blood pressure. Plus, over a lifetime, people accumulate various health conditions, such as kidney dysfunction, diabetes, or obesity, which also influence blood pressure. Overall, age is one of the risk factors for developing hypertension, but people live with it. High blood pressure itself is not a catastrophe. It just needs to be lowered to safe levels, but not always. How's that, you might ask? What kind of recommendations are these? But remember what I told you about high blood pressure being a reaction of the body to stress. In this case, the first thing doctors advise is to relax. Lie down, take deep breaths. Listen to quiet music. Think about something good or pleasant. In short, calm down, and your blood pressure will normalize. You don't need to take pills in this case, unlike in a hypertensive crisis, which is now commonly referred to as uncontrolled arterial hypertension. Hypertension, by the way, is often confused with a hypertensive crisis because of the similarity in names and the cause of high blood pressure, but these are two different conditions. You see, a crisis is an acute condition that requires immediate lowering of elevated blood pressure. At this time, there is a significant increase in arterial pressure to critical levels. And hypertension is when high blood pressure persists for a long period of time, and it's no less dangerous. Although many people don't experience any symptoms with high blood pressure, they can't be called lucky. It's hidden, quiet, and unnoticed by the person. Constant high blood pressure, like an overload in an electrical system, burdens the cardiovascular system every second. At any moment, something might short-circuit. High blood pressure often leads to stroke, heart attack, and kidney diseases. According to the World Health Organization, hypertension is one of the leading causes of premature death worldwide. Even a child understands the need to lower high blood pressure to normal levels and to act immediately during a hypertensive crisis. Typically, people with hypertension know what to do over time. They turn to medications prescribed by doctors to lower their blood pressure. But what if you're in the middle of nowhere, where there are no doctors or pharmacies for thousands of kilometers? 
you might try to lower your blood pressure without medication. I'll tell you about that very soon. But first, I must warn you about the risks of uncontrolled reduction. What does it mean to reduce it without control? It means doing it without monitoring your actual blood pressure. Let's say your head starts to ache, and you think it's due to high blood pressure, so you put a blood pressure pill under your tongue, without checking whether your blood pressure has actually increased. But, maybe your headache is because of the not-so-fresh fish you had for dinner. It's reckless to lower your blood pressure every time you feel unwell. Uncontrolled reduction can lead to undesirable consequences, such as rebound effect, when blood pressure fluctuates rapidly in different directions. This can happen when blood pressure drops suddenly, for example, when you've been lying down for a long time and suddenly get up. At that moment, the heart starts beating faster to normalize the pressure. Then the blood vessels dilate and the heart slows down, but this leads to an even greater drop in pressure, sometimes resulting in fainting. Such pressure swings are contraindicated for hypertensive individuals, and for anyone to prevent this, it is recommended to lower pressure gradually and only when it is actually elevated. Now let's move on from pressure swings straight to the fridge. Be honest, do you like bacon? You might have thought I was going to start forbidding you your favorite foods again. But no, I won't. Let's consider that with hypertension you can have everything but not everything is necessary. And in the list of permissible but unnecessary foods are those that can worsen the condition of the heart's blood vessels and increase blood pressure. These include salty and smoked foods, fatty and fried foods, sweets and confectionery, coffee, alcohol, and sweet soda. Coffee contains a substance that raises blood pressure, but some people are less sensitive to it. They might need to drink not just one but three cups of coffee, for example, to feel energized. Want to check if you can drink coffee? Do a simple test. Drink a cup of coffee and measure your blood pressure three times every 30 minutes. If your pressure rises by 10 or more, you should limit your coffee intake. But if your pressure doesn't rise after one cup, it's okay to have that cup of coffee. It won't affect your blood pressure. Now let's talk about bacon. Without any tests, it's clear that it's pure fat. And saturated fats raise cholesterol levels in the blood and increase the risk of developing cardiovascular diseases. So, the less bacon you have in your life, the lower your blood pressure. And it's not just about the fat on your plate but also the fat stored in your body as reserves. The amount of fat in the body directly affects blood pressure readings because with excess weight, the heart and blood vessels experience additional strain to ensure blood flow throughout the body. That's hypertension for you. Experts claim that obesity is the main risk factor for arterial hypertension, with 65 to 75% of cases of arterial hypertension being linked to obesity. 60% of patients with arterial hypertension have excess weight of more than 20%. The heart beats 100,000 times a day. Weight gain increases the load on a healthy heart and leads to an increase in the length of blood vessels in the body. Studies show that even a 5-10% to weight loss already leads to a decrease in blood pressure. Weight loss is one of the key factors in managing blood pressure. And to tame that pressure, add physical activity and balance nutrition to the mix. Let me emphasize, balanced means not a strict diet but rather a diet that helps keep blood pressure in check. You don't need to completely give up salt and survive on bland zucchinis, for example. Curious why salt was deemed risky for hypertensive individuals in the first place? Because salt not only retains water in the body, but also increases blood volume. When there's too much blood, it exerts stronger pressure on the vessel walls, which is why doctors advise limiting salt intake. The key word here is limit. There's no need to completely avoid salt because, unfortunately, our bodies don't produce it. And salt, a.k.a. sodium, is needed for proper muscle and nervo system function. Do you know how much salt there is in a person? 250 grams. Is it everywhere? In lymph, blood, tears, sweat, interstitial fluid, and gastric juice. Salt is one of the most important minerals involved in the metabolism of our body. Just don't salt everything indiscriminately and consume no more than a teaspoon of salt. That's the daily limit. The standard salt intake in many countries ranges from 9 to 12 grams per day. Reducing it to 5 grams per day leads to a decrease in blood pressure by approximately 4 to 5 million or mere calories. I'll note that about 80% of the consumed table salt comes from hidden salt, 
found in processed foods like bread, cheese, and convenience foods. Therefore, it's unlikely that a patient can completely abstain from salt. It's just not feasible. Here's how experts recommend reducing salt intake. Salt food at the very end of cooking to require less. Don't add extra salt. Use low-sodium salt and cut down on processed and hidden salt foods. So let's say you consume little salt, stay calm about trivial matters, lead an active lifestyle, and generally feel great. Blood pressure doesn't bother you. Do you still need to measure it? Yes. How else will you know if there are any issues? How do you do it right? Let's learn how to measure blood pressure. And if you already know how, let's quickly review. It won't hurt. So for accurate results, measure blood pressure in a calm environment. Rest for 5-10 minutes before measuring. Sit on a chair with back support, legs uncrossed. It's better to place the cuff on the arm, not over clothing, above the elbow at heart level. Sit quietly and avoid talking. And it's advisable to do this not just once, but two or even three times with a one-minute interval. Now let's look at the results. Blood pressure is measured in millimeters of mercury, mmHg. There are two types, systolic and diastolic. Systolic pressure occurs when the heart contracts and pumps blood into the arteries. Diastolic pressure occurs when the heart relaxes and fills with blood. Which pressure is more important? Both are significant for health, but in the case of hypertension, the systolic pressure is more crucial because it reflects the force with which blood presses against the artery walls during heart contraction, while an increase in diastolic pressure may indicate kidney problems, for example. Suppose you've noticed that your blood pressure is higher than it should be. The first question is, can you change it without medication? Yes, you can and should. Normal blood pressure levels can be achieved by changing your lifestyle and habits. It's a comprehensive approach to your health, not a one-time action, but a continuous effort. And for those intending to take control of their health, I'll reiterate the key points for lowering blood pressure. 1. Eat a balanced diet. 2. Control weight and stress. 3. Maintain a regular sleep schedule and be physically active. And since we're talking about physical activity, let me tell you that statistically, people who lead a sedentary lifestyle have a higher risk of developing hypertension. Physical activity is a must, but it should be moderate. However, nobody expects you to achieve high athletic feats. Just walk, swim, ride a bike, or dance. Any feasible and regular physical exercise improves circulation and lowers blood pressure. But how do you quickly lower blood pressure without medication? When there are no doctors or pills nearby, what do you do? First, calm down. It's understandable that a sudden rise in blood pressure is alarming. Your imagination may already be painting a picture of a heart attack or stroke, but to lower blood pressure without medication, you need to calm down, control your breathing, breathe slowly and deeply. Deep breathing helps regulate blood flow, reduce the release of stress hormones and lowers pressure. Massage yourself or ask someone to gently massage your neck and heat along the massage lines. Masagi is a great remedy for high blood pressure and headaches in general. Our channel subscribers have tried and recommend both traditional massage and Chinese acupressure massage for lowering blood pressure. Chinese medicine offers many different methods for normalizing blood pressure. The Chinese have developed a whole system of medicine that includes acupuncture, massage, herbal treatment, exercises, and diet. And one of the methods that helps lower blood pressure is acupressure. It's a treatment method where you have to apply pressure to specific points on the body to stimulate energy channels. Pressing on certain points helps reduce pressure and alleviate headaches. To lower blood pressure, acupressure is performed on the following points. 1. Point on the wrist. It's located between the tendons of two muscles on the wrist. 2. Point on the neck. It's located on the back of the neck between two muscles. 3. Point on the foot is located between the big toe and the second toe on the foot. Press each point gently and rhythmically several times. Massage it for 1-2 minutes. Chinese massage is recommended to be done 1-2 times a day in the morning and evening. And remember when I said that using a wrist expander helps lower blood pressure? It's not a joke. The expander works, as proven by research conducted by the National Medical Library. 
participants in the study exercised with the expander three times a week and their blood pressure readings decreased, and they didn't even use the expander every day. And if you need to take emergency measures, I recommend a simple and effective way to lower blood pressure using hot water. Fill a plastic bottle with hot water that your hand can tolerate without burning, and place one bottle under your neck, another under your knees, and a third under your feet. It's better to lie on your back at this moment. The warmth causes the blood vessels to dilate, improving blood circulation and gradually lowering blood pressure. What herbs and plants are recommended for lowering blood pressure? These include familiar ones like garlic, ginger, cranberries, St. John's wort, mint, and valerian. Drink them as infusions, teas, or add them to food in their natural form. Berries in general are very beneficial, but they don't replace medication. There are also physical exercises that help keep blood pressure under control. First, deep breathing. Take a deep breath and exhale very slowly and calmly, making the exhale longer than the inhale. Second, muscle relaxation. First tense your muscles, then relax them. Repeat several times. Third, marching in place. Just walk in place, but try to lift your knees as high as possible. Fourth, pendulum exercise. Stand in place and hold onto something to prevent falling. Slowly lean forward and backward like a pendulum. Fifth, circular movements exercise. Turn your head slowly from side to side and make circular motions without sudden movements. Sixth, clasping and relaxing fists exercise. A fairly simple exercise. Clench your fists, then relax them. Give it a try. It's really not difficult. And if you want to fully cure hypertension, you'll have to work on yourself. Yes, most cases of primary hypertension, the kind that occurs without a specific cause, can be controlled without medication. You just need to change your lifestyle and replace harmful habits with healthy ones. And it's never too late to do so. According to experts, the main mistake in treatment is taking medication on an A's needed basis, rather than consistently and not achieving target values. Our goal is not to sharply lower blood pressure, but to prevent its elevation. Unfortunately, errors in hypertension treatment can lead to a stroke, and one of them is choosing the wrong medication and incorrect dosage. Attention, the pill that helps your neighbor may harm you. For example, too high a dose of medication can cause your blood pressure to drop, reduce blood flow to the brain, and result in a stroke. Please, don't self-medicate with drugs. Go to the doctor. Don't ignore illnesses, as more than a thousand people die from hypertension every hour. This is a fact that the World Health Organization recently published in a report on the consequences of hypertension. It's good to know about high blood pressure and its causes. The question now is, what will you do with this knowledge? For those who want to keep their blood pressure under control, I've prepared a health improvement guide. Here's what it looks like. Watch your weight. Eat less salt and fatty foods. Consume more fruits, vegetables, and greens. Limit alcohol and smoking. Incorporate regular physical activity into your life. Avoid stressful situations and learn to relax. Get enough sleep and maintain a daily routine. Monitor your blood pressure and take medication if necessary. There's one more crucial point that affects health and life. You need to know what to do if you or someone nearby accidentally lowers blood pressure too much. This situation requires emergency measures. Remember, lie on your back and raise your legs above your head to increase blood flow to the head and heart. Drink strong hot tea or coffee with sugar, as caffeine can raise blood pressure. Call emergency services if the blood pressure doesn't rise. But I hope you approach blood pressure reduction consciously, and such situations won't happen to you. Remember, hypertension won't go away on its own. To lower and maintain blood pressure within bounds, you'll have to make an effort, identify the causes, address them, take care of your health, and change your lifestyle. But believe me, it's worth it. In return for these efforts, you get the opportunity to live fully and enjoy every moment.